Spain 82, Mexico 86, and Italia 90 have all contributed some of the most memorable moments in FIFA World Cup history. They were also the last three appearances made by the USSR before the fall of the Iron Curtain and mark the beginning, middle and end of one of Soviet football's outstanding careers. Vladimir Besonov is currently the head coach of Ukrainian top flight side Dnipro Dnipropetrovsk. 27 years ago as a 24 year old, he was about to step foot in his first FIFA World Cup. Getting there was perhaps our biggest achievement. The players had no experience of playing in a World Cup, as the country spent the 70s trying to qualify for major tournaments, but failing to do so. So, understandably, there was no one who was used to this kind of stage. And I think the main reason we qualified was because of how hard our coaching staff had worked with us. Their first FIFA World Cup match for 12 years was against Brazil, a team that boasted the likes of Zico, Falcao and Socrates, far from an ideal opening fixture. But in the years that the USSR senior team had been faltering, a new generation had been blossoming. Besonov was player of the tournament when they lifted the inaugural Youth World Cup of 1977. And another graduate of that team, Andrei Bal, gave the Soviets a surprise lead. But for Besonov and the rest of the defence, keeping a clean sheet against such a formidable front line is a near impossibility. Socrates' stunning equaliser was followed by another Brazilian goal out of the top draw. Hader's volley two minutes from time condemned the Soviets to an opening defeat. They did, however, progress to the second group stage with three points from their other games. But this is where their journey would end. Despite a 1-0 victory over Belgium, a stalemate with Poland in a politically charged encounter saw the Soviets head home on goal difference. By the time Mexico hosted the tournament four years later, the Soviet team was a very different proposition. Just two weeks before the start of the tournament, Dynamo Kiev coach Valery Lobanovsky was drafted in. He stuck with Watson, who he knew, recruiting 13 players from that Dynamo squad, a team that had just lifted the UEFA Cup Winners' Cup. It seemed to be a masterstroke, as what was essentially a club side demolished Hungary 6-0 in their opening game. Players were now experienced, confident and knew each other's games. This was a team that had the potential to go a very long way. I don't think we felt we would definitely become the world champions, but we had set ourselves a target of at least reaching the semi-finals. We had a chance of getting there unquestionably, and after that first game where we scored six, it only strengthened our belief that under the leadership of Lobanovsky, we could do very well. But then, both us, as a team, and the referee made mistakes, and that meant that this would never happen. These perceived mistakes came in an epic last 16 encounter with Belgium. Having finished top of their group, above a much-fancied French team, the USSR were firm favourites. And Igor Belenov sent them into a half-time lead. But this was a Belgian side having the tournament of their lives, and ten minutes into the second half, Enzo Schifo was left unmarked to bring things level. Belenov struck again as the Soviets sensed a place in the quarter-finals, but 2-1 soon became 2-2. As Besonov and the rest of the defence looked for an offside flag that never came, Jan Kuhlmann's 77th-minute strike sent the game into extra time, which would prove to be a step too far for the Soviets. For me and the whole team, not being able to get past Belgium was a tragedy. 
We were 100% sure we could do it, perhaps too sure. We were playing well and leading and were comfortable with our lead. But then the linesmen made an error. They scored and it meant the game went into extra time. It was at this point that we started getting nervous and that led us to losing the game. Belgium took a 3-2 lead before Nico Klaassen took advantage of more slack defending to make it four. Despite Igor Belenov completing his hat-trick with a penalty, it was too little, too late, and the USSR's best crop of players for 20 years was out. Come 1990, and Besonov and the USSR headed to Italy for what would be their last tournament as a nation. This was the twilight of many of their international careers, and they faced one of the world's most feared opponents in the group stage, Argentina. Well, playing Argentina was always going to be tough. We'd lost our first game to Romania, whilst they had lost against Cameroon. So when we played each other, it was essentially a knockout game. What made that match even more difficult was that it was in Naples, and of course at that time Maradona played for Napoli. So you can imagine who everyone was supporting. The USSR started brightly and should have had a penalty when Maradona's hand of God struck again. The sense of injustice was complete when Pedro Trollio's header gave Argentina the lead just before the half-hour mark. Three minutes into the second half, Claudio Canigia's pace got the better of Besonov and his clumsy challenge earned him a straight red card. Argentina went on to win 2-0 and the USSR would exit their last tournament at the group stage. It was a sad end for one of Soviet football's most loyal servants, as Besonov would never play international football again. <laughs>